some point. Dave, sorry, the other Dave. I think we're good. Yeah, okay, should be good. Now you can start. All right, All right. we'll call the uh, February 8th meeting of the Inland Wellness Agency to order at 7 2. Our roll call tonight is Barbara Block, Annie O, and Eunice Seppin. I don't have any alternates, so. It's just us. Uh, we're in the middle of a public hearing on Inland Wetlands 22-09, uh, the Flanders Development, Zero Flanders Road. Uh, for the record, we do have to close this public hearing tonight. Um, and I know we had some outstanding questions or comments from staff. Sure. Um, as you said, the public hearing needs to close tonight. To February 8th is the last date the project may be heard. So after the close of the public hearing, the IWA must take action within 35 days to make, render a decision. Um, the applicant is planning to address some following remaining issues at this meeting. So that would be the water from any indoor sprinkler system, how that would be treated, the possible requirement of a certificate for public convenience and necessity. And then given that there are no street trees shown, um, whether the commission finds it um, purview of the commission to look at that component. Um, could I just, could you go over the second one mm, one more time? Sure, the certificate okay. of public convenience and necessity from the Department of Public Health um, is a certificate that they might be required if they're, they have a well um, and they're serving a certain amount of people. So gotcha. um, that's a fine finding form that they have to fill out and then I'm sure Grant can talk to that. And is that pertinent to wetlands? Kind of a little, maybe? So it's, it is only um, with regards to actually having to construct the well and possibly yeah. um, if, if, if the Pub Department of Public Health finds that you do need a certificate of public convenience and necessity, you're essentially a water company, okay? Um, and you will have to, do testing and all sorts of other stuff. And typically you find a small building that's associated with the well to, to do the testing. So there may be additional structures that have to be associated with the well. So that's, yeah. and if it's in the Upland Review area, then yeah, it's in your preferred. And that would come before, our, that would come before our commission again, if there were additional. It, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so the certificate requirements are based on size of building and the number of employees. So. Greg needs to make the case to Department of Health that his building is small and he's not going to have that many employees and, and basically get an exemption. I see. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. Thanks, Deb. Um, and then additionally, the Public Works director, director did have some comments that were sent, and that is what is proposed for the surface treatment around the plunge pool, in particular the area between the plunge pool and the level spreader. It's kind of a blank area right now and then to provide dimensions in the stone channel cross-section. So just a friendly reminder, your decision tonight is based on the following standards and criteria for a decision, and that is the environmental impact of the project, whether the alternative selected is the most feasible and prudent alternative, the short and long-term impacts of this proposed activity, ensuring there is no irreversible damage to the wetlands or loss, upholding reasonable use of the property, and others downstream, and then impacts to the surrounding wetlands. And a map depicting the surrounding wetlands was distributed in your agenda. Thank you. Um, and a draft motion is also available once um, we close the hearing. Thank you. All right. I think take it away. Right. <clears throat> okay. Do I need to speak in the microphone? Yeah, it, it just picks up better. <clears throat> Didn't yell at David last meeting. He was just holding it down by his hand. I know. <laughs> but you want to set an example, Greg? Testing. Okay. Okay, I'm going to be brief. I don't, I mean, I can put the, I think we just need to put the, uh, it's 
right. So I think we were tasked with last time. Uh, Pull the plan just a yeah. little bit to, get to the left. So well, I think last time we were passed with Greg Fettis with Fettis Engineering, uh, for said 70 Essex Street Mystic, uh, tasked with pulling this back as far as possible. Uh, we were able to, because we pulled it back so far, we were able to get rid of, we had an angle point previously, so we were able to get rid of that other structure uh, and pull it back, uh, kind of reconfigure uh, the underground infiltration into the plunge pool. Um, so one of the comments, and we did blow it up here, uh, well, on the, uh, we did blow up the plunge pool area, so the public works director was talking about the area between the plunge pool and the um, level spreader. Uh, does not show rip wrap right now, but we'll uh, make that adjustment as a technical item. Um, it was meant to meant to be there, so basically the two. Uh, <clears throat> Flared end units would drain into the plunge pool. You can see the grading there. Um, looks a little bit lower, allows uh, sediment to settle out. Uh, we do have a, uh, a note on the plan that regarding the, um, the stake uh, to keep track of levels of sediment, um, and which would be in the, uh, uh, the maintenance. So once it fills up to a certain level on the stake, we'd be able to uh, go in uh, clean that out. Um, so I think that was the big thing, uh, just to address uh, address the comments of the public works director first. Uh, let me just what, we, what else we changed on here. We added the driveway across the street. Uh, that's located here. Shows up a little bit better. <clears throat> Site plan. So that's the driveway across the street. I mean, you uh, added it on the plane. We added it to the plane. Mm -hmm. yeah. added it driveway across the street. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, we didn't. Uh, yes. The existing driveway entrance gotcha. across the street was a comment that we should add that to the plan. Uh, the inset of the plunge pole, which we just looked at. Uh, and then we added a note regarding the percentage of impervious surface in the upland review area is 18.8%. Okay. 18. So it's uh, what I would consider to be relatively low um, for, for impervious. Um, and seeing as 90% of the site is in the 100 foot regulator, it's just very small areas that are not. Uh, that's the plan. Now I'm gonna just go over quickly the public works, if there's any questions regarding that. Uh, as I spoke already, this first item was the area between the plunge pool and the level spreader. That'll be a uh, rip wrap. Um, the dimensions on the stone channel cross section uh, do vary a little bit. So I'm going to have to, uh, we, we did a kind of two to one slope on the, on the side slopes and then a kind of a- oh, Is that this? That's from the level spreader down to basically this point where okay. it goes to more from more of a single uh, line to it starts to spread out. Okay. And I think that uh, will, you know, as David spoke to last time, aerate the, the water as it's going through. And I forget what else he said, but he said a lot of uh, very technical things, um, which are in the record. Uh, so we'll, we can add that again as a technical item and give some more uh, actual numbers to it. It is, it is scalable on here, but uh, it will offer some additional information there. <clears throat> uh, he wants us to increase the radiuses. Hang on, I need to just stop you there. Yeah. So additional information, but we have to close oh. the public hearing. Oh, yeah. well, as a technical item, I think it's just the width. It, it, it is scalable here. He's it's asking us scalable. Well, I can take the scale because the drawing is to scale, and I can say to you right now on the record, this is Please a do. 40 scale. That is for the most part, it's 10 feet wide in total. Um that's that that's the entire width of coming, the channel from coming from, from the sorry, plunge. Yeah, yeah. From the, it's a little bit wider when it 
leaves the level spreader. Okay? Yeah. And it kind of tapers into 10 yeah. feet. And then it matches, um, let's say, right around the wetland flag 102 and 100, the actual width of where it starts to spread out, where we walked mm -hmm. the site and yeah. several commission members stated that hey, it doesn't look like a single mm -hmm. like no so we went out and david we flagged david lord reflagged it and so that's where we kind of ran this channel too uh so it's more consistent and i think what it's also going to do is limit uh the amount of sediment considerably that gets uh both the plunge pool in the channel limit the amount of sediment that gets Kind of pushed down as like a almost like a delta. Um, Is there a maintenance plan for keeping that cleaned? That the sediment that it accumulates. Uh, let me Is check. That part of your. I'm not maintenance? sure that we had that on the maintenance. Uh, but uh, I'm a little concerned about that. Okay. Well, what was the stake that you just mentioned? Stake to keep track. So there will be a stake uh, located. You can see the the dip of the basin there. So basically, the sediment. So that's in the plunge pool. That's right in the plunge pool. Okay. Um, can you do something like that in this uh, stone channel? Oh, uh, we could. Um, we could. We could do we could do a stake in there. I just your your majority of the sediment, if not all of it, is going to going to settle out here in the pool. And we're replacing mm -hmm. uh, the catch basin um, on our side with a new catch basin and a sump. So you're going to get sediment drop out there. That's good. Which is part of our maintenance schedule. Probably right now it's my guess is it's full up to the I, I don't know because I haven't looked at it, but my guess is it's full to the to the top. Um, not to the top of the basin, but to the top of the, to the invert of the pipe. So mm -hmm. water is just going right through and mm -hmm. taking whatever sediment yeah. through with it. Um, but I think between the catch basin and the sediment basin, you're going to capture well over, I would say, 90 plus percent of yep. sediment. So I think the channel, uh, I think putting a state there, I think we can, as a technical item, again, I think we can add just a note that says we'll we'll maintain it um, sediment wise. I don't think a stake is going to really help that much in the sediment channel, um, but we could we could add it if that's necessary. If you if you feel it's necessary, you could just monitor it and do this. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see. I mean, we were we were all out there. We saw the sediment that's getting. Yep. Uh, yeah, pushed mm -hmm. right down through into the wetlands, and this is going to be a considerably different uh, scenario. Uh, so, number three, which is I guess it's within the regulated review area, but barely, uh, the radius is at the driveway entrances. He wants a little bit bigger um, for truck access and so forth, which is fine. He wants it at 15 feet instead of five. And so what does that mean exactly for the plan? What does that mean? It, it, gonna... all, it, all it means is that this five foot radius is going to be a little bit um, gotcha. bigger. Like the apron on the, on the driveway kind mm. of thing? Yeah. So okay. at the at the edge of road, it'll be a wider cut. Uh, the actual driveway width. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a relatively small building it's all private there's not going to be you know you're not going to have a lot of traffic um, going in and out here uh, uh, we called out a sidewalk on our side of the road but maybe we didn't call it out as concrete he wants us to add concrete and put a detail for that and handicap ramps typically some of these items are for uh, are for uh, site plan approval, but again, they're within the 100 foot regulated review area. So uh, nothing's going to change on the plan except for some notations as a, yeah. again, a technical item. Uh, which we addressed this previously. This, again, this is uh, this is outside the 100 foot regulated review area, but this driveway to the adjacent property, Mr. Avery, that was yeah. here mm -hmm. a couple times, uh, encroaches onto our property. Um, we're not doing anything over there. 
yeah, I think I said before that I would grant an, we would grant an easement upon approval, okay. all approvals okay. for him to continue to use this driveway. Gotcha. Uh, oh, so he's still concerned with this um, state or stacked. He called it state. I misspoke again, but it's supposed to be stacked boulder retaining wall. Again, it's a relatively uh, anything over three feet needs to be designed by a professional engineer at the building department level. So we would provide a not going to change, not going to change from what you see here, just going to have calculations and so forth to back it up that's saying, you know, you can drive along the edge of it and it's not going to tumble over. Um, so let me just make sure his concerns, uh, uh, ability to handle the traffic loads, it'll be designed to handle the traffic loads. So it's not, nothing's going to change um, with this face. Um, and the design, there's, I mean, it's a straightforward, you know, four and a half foot. It's only this tall. So um, his concern was not around wetlands, but rather whether people could drive on the stability the, of the wall. Okay, just mm -hmm. uh, He wants this crush stone in the top of the wall to be even with the top of the curbing. <sighs> It's not really a need for it, um, but if someone felt really strong about it, I don't personally care, which is going to make everything a little six inches higher. We're trying to limit what we do. I would, I would personally leave it. We can so easily. Let's, let's talk yeah. about that yeah, because the height of that wall definitely oh. does matter to me, and we, because we talked early on about having the wall be as low as possible. Yes. Yeah. So I personally, as a professional engineer, don't have a problem with the design as depicted here. Um, where you, the wall and the crushed stone are a little bit lower. They're probably five inches lower because you can see they go up and lower than what? Lower than the top of the curb. So curbs are typically six inches oh, tall. Top of the curb. Gotcha. And typically, you can see, so there's two layers of pavement. Typically, you would pave the binder coat, which is a bigger stone. Then you would put the curb down, and then you would do the uh, finish coat of the mm -hmm. pavement. So typically, the, even though they're called a six-inch bituminous curbing, they end up being five, four and a half, five inches because... And then, so we show it the crushed stone coming up. So it's about four, four and a half, five inches difference of what we're talking about here. I, I don't see a need to raise the wall. Another five, four, four and a half, five inches. Yeah. So I can take that with up. And if he's adamant. And so what happens from our standpoint? Because we, we did really talk about the height mm -hmm. of the wall. So if this is the plan that you approve, this is the plan you approve. And they just have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That, that's good. Yeah, it's sort of not really our right. bailiwick, as it were. Okay. Right. And we did uh, we did leave room for, for a guide rail uh, between um, the wall and, and the curbing. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's necessary like, to look at, you know, it's again, four and a half feet. I don't think it's necessary, but it's a flat, you know, you're not coming down a hill to where you you know, lose your brakes. You are shooting over the, mm -hmm. over the bank. So I, again, I will we'll deal with that. Uh, we did leave room for it. And if, and if, the commission felt or staff felt we had to come back if, again, public works and or town engineer is adamant that we have to put a guide rail in, we'll come back. And this is the whole way around this wall. Well, like I mean, it's higher here, we know. But yeah, yeah, like yeah. here it's almost right. zero. It fades yeah. into zero. And so for sure. I, I don't I don't think it's necessary, but again, we'll come we'll come back if, if staff thinks it's necessary. It's so, the guide rail. I, I don't know that a guide rail, the guide rail is not going to increase the height. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't, I, yeah. you know. Okay. I don't, but I'm just saying, I don't, I, yeah. I don't, I don't think we want to put a guide rail all the way around it. But 
there we might would, be some big trucks. Would they be in danger of going over the ledge? So or? there's guide rails and then there's guardrails. A guide rail is meant to keep you on the pavement, to guide you. Yeah. A guardrail is to protect you from falling over. Sure. So in this case, again, four and a half feet at the highest. You don't really guardrails are much more expensive than guide rails along the highways for the most part they're guide rails they're, they're to give you that sense of staying in the lane and guiding you down the road and on turns so but that's your issue but with is, them not exactly with this us is what, this you know so. and is you said it was very low is it four feet low for no, it's, zero, it's almost zero low here, and then here it's higher because. Or, yeah. So my question was, is it going to keep trucks from accidentally going off? Well, I don't think well, that's what he's saying. going to site plan review after this. So yeah. just funny. yeah, yeah. That'll be that. That's more of a planning issue. They'll have to yeah, that's they'll have, have a discussion yeah. with planning yeah. about that. For us, if we say that the highest height is whatever shown in the plan, four and a half feet, that's it. And then they'll have to work within those parameters. So, Whatever you know, Crush Delany wants. To However, you want to play with the Crush. Yeah, Delaney. probably if he adds, if he makes us add that, that probably just try to lower the whole site six inches. Yeah. Yeah. So there's ways around it. I don't. I think what we did was the most efficient and you know least height in the wall and least disturbance to the wetlands. Uh, so that's that. Um, just quickly, so indoor water, indoor sprinkler system may be required, according to the fire marshal. Um, with, that's really a building permit issue. However, um, Tabitha raised the concern that what happens if the sprinkler system goes off. So we I drafted a quick. Uh, Letter, if if they're required based on our use, we would we would slope the floor on the inside, the concrete floor on the inside, uh, direct it to some holding tanks. You know, kind of make a best guess on how long the sprinkler system would be on, and holding tanks underneath the concrete, underneath the concrete, mm -hmm. and then if it filled up, they'd have to get pumped out so they wouldn't leak in. They wouldn't just, okay. But that's only if it's required. I'm, I, I'm not, I don't, it, it might be a new code requirement for certain uses. Um, this actually makes me happy because I was, I know I wasn't supposed to talk about that, but, you know, if, if the sprinkler did go off and there was oil or something like that, so that's good. It's going to be cached. Yeah, that's good. So I guess if there weren't sprinkler systems, where would the, I guess the question might be, where would the fire engine's water go? Seems a little more sp sporadic than, mm -hmm. but I don't know that we need to <laughs> anyway, that's talk that's about that. Not too far-fetched. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, as for the certificate of public convenience and necessity, we did look at that way back. Deb mentioned it when I first came to with this project, and we did look at it, and I think we're far from meeting it. We um we do um uh, convenience stores uh for gas station stuff and those are the kind of things we there's a lot of customers coming in and out but it's a 25 uh, 25 is the is the key number 25 and there's not going to be 25 employees at all this kind of use um but they base it on the size of your building they don't they don't take your they don't take your word for it that it's going to be less mm -hmm. than 25 and you're going to need to do it for planning, so you may as well just okay. get a ruling out of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I, I, uh, Deb was mentioning that if we did have to do it, like the ones I've done anyway, we haven't had a, a separate okay. little shed or building or anything. We have mm -hmm. an area set aside in the exist into the in the proposed building in this case uh -huh. or existing building that the case may be. So let's uh, talk a little more specifically about that. So say they do say. You, you're yeah, nothing to... really changes with the well installation, or it just it's just About more testing. Nope. Well, they would look at location, but we've we've taken kind of into account where where the well needs 
the well needs to meet the public health code anyway, of course. Either, in either scenario. So it's really just testing. They want to make sure that the water is safe for more than 25 people to drink versus less than 25. They want another, it's like a, it's a check and balance kind of thing. And then what about the edifice that Deb was talking about? Like if you would have to cover the cover the well? Cover the no, no, some some um developments like the one across the street, the the large one, they have separate buildings near their well. Greg is saying instead of doing a separate building, he could house that equipment within this building you're footprint you're seeing here. So it wouldn't change the right benefit oh, right. anything. They need the areas to sample, right? Like take samples. Okay. Quarterly, I think it is. Um so your typical well on like a residential, you don't have a sampling spot. No. You just, I think most of the time it's just tap water. They want us, they want to get it before any treatment. And then I think after any treatment. So the, it's all set up in that, in that, uh, where it comes into the building, where it be distributed. But you can handle that within, within the building. So you, nothing would change on the okay. plant. All right. Or, uh, street trees, yeah. So we uh, we would, and again, this is typically a site plan item, but we're, again, we're within um, the review area. So we have about 500 feet, about 10 street trees. There's a lot of trees out there. What we would try to do is pick. Um, obviously, we're not disturbing anything on this right. side. Um, and we're not disturbing anything over here. So we. We would, what we've done in the past is we would locate the, the exact trees. In this case, we're not, I mean, I don't, we could add street trees if they're not, or if they're not any there, but I think there's plenty of street trees here as well as here. So it would just be a matter of plucking. So you're maybe. saying you'll take trees out and then you'll replace them? No, we won't. We won't. We'll, we'll count. You're allowed to count existing trees as your street tree requi requirement okay. if they meet the requirements or close to if they're it. large enough large enough yeah, yeah. The existing so you just save the existing trees and you meet this the requirement of the zoning regulations using the existing then you trees. don't have to right so he'll identify that and if and if not he'll supplement so that he has 10 trees at least along the front yeah. so trees along the whole because what we wouldn't want them to do is disturb an area that they weren't going to destroy. Oh, right, right. right. That's the point. Either. We don't want to do that. Yeah. So, but we would identify it on the site plan to show where we're in conformance with the zoning regulations. We didn't do it. And they don't have to be lined up like in a row. Or there's no. They're supposed to be every fifty feet. But you can. But but you, 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 as long as you have the right number. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we would be supplementing definitely a couple of trees in this right in front of the building. As well as uh, probably one right there. Well, I would still want to note on our uh, thing about that that they're not going to disturb areas that they're mm -hmm. that we wouldn't be disturbing with this plan. Absolutely, to put street trees in. Okay, thanks, Tony. Uh, I think that's it. Unless there's any questions, happy to answer them. Just want to know, Barbara Williams did attend. Came into the meeting at about ten after seven, so mm -hmm. she is here. Oh, good. Hi, Barb. She's okay. Does anybody? Uh, have Hello. Any, Hi. <laughs> have any questions, comments? I, I just did this thing about the sedimentation. I understand that there so would be better with the engineering and then it is the accumulation now, but I still think we need to know that that's going to be looked at periodically so that there's not an over accumulation. You probably know from your experience, you know, some kind of estimate about how, how fast that would accumulate. There may even be some numbers for that. It's right here. I'm spinning around to read it. 
or I can. So the first place you're going to see sediment is in the catch basin, right. the one at the top. So uh, I'm trying to read it upside down. Clean at least annually after oh, okay. after the snow and ice removal, uh, removal season is over, and as soon as possible before spring rainfall events. If a catch basin significantly exceeds this one half depth standard during the annual inspection, then it should be cleaned. More frequently. Okay. Who's doing so that? that? Yeah. Who's doing That's uh, the owner of the property is required to okay. do that. Um, and again, the I don't want to across the street. Probably when they got theirs, I don't know how long ago they got theirs approved, but if they should be cleaning theirs also. So it's 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 key that the upstream it's clean. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, because yeah. otherwise, we could be cleaning it quarterly or every yeah. monthly um and I, you know i don't want to create work for them across the street but it's gonna it's gonna help yeah. the situation i guess the other thing is that uh, um does the owner know that that's a, well he's he's you know, required and then i think it becomes, yeah, they, it becomes uh, part of the when it becomes a, a enforcement okay issue. well that's if, of course if yeah. for whatever reason someone comes out uh, Deb or yeah. uh, Tabitha come out right. and in the basin and it's full of sediment. Yes. And, yeah. or, you know, or we come a, out. There's a process, yeah. yeah. Uh, so then the next thing would be the plunge pool maintenance, um, clear of debris. And then, you know, there's also garbage pickup, you know, that gets people throw out, yeah. you know, all that. So I mean, we probably saw a little bit of that on the side we of the did. Uh Check the sediment monitoring stake after major storms. Uh, make sure that drawdown times do not exceed. It's not going to be an issue. 36 to 48 hours. Uh, first few months after construction, check for erosion after major storms. So the key is in the beginning, you want to just really keep an eye on it. Yeah. Make sure that it's stable. Um, and then once everything's established, uh, patterns are established and so forth, that uh, Right. And it's a more, uh, you know, every six months or every year after spring, spring, you fall. Kind of get in the habit. Uh, let me just see what else it says here. First few months, yeah, we just talked about that. Make sure outlets are clear of debris. Make sure overflow spillways clear of debris. If filter fabric is exposed, uh, repi replace. Re What's this? You know, rip, 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 or ripped, replace it. So inspect at least twice a year. So you're inspecting the plunge pool twice a year. Again, as a technical item, I can just yeah. add a, stone, a rip rap channel to that. It'd be a similar, be similar. Well, I feel better now that yeah, it's you're right going to see that. Uh, and then the catch basins clean at least annually after snow and removal season. We yeah, we yep. did it. Okay. Yeah. So, so, well, just the updated catch basin. Yeah. And just one more thing along those lines with construction. Can you just, I know you talked about this already, but can you go over the ENS plan construction? Sure. Uh, just know what that is. Okay, so the first thing we would do is, is well, clear. Uh, Clearing and grubbing. First thing we do is go in and put uh, soap vents and hay bales basically around uh, the entire site, mm -hmm. down gradient. Um, and are those all state hay bales? On the with, fifty foot line. Uh, for the not, most part, this, they're right on. This the, one is right on the fifty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is inside. What happens right here? This gets a little bit. This is outside the fifty. The fifty tapers in like that and like that. So this is. Uh, this is oh. <laughs> it's right on the 50 here and it's right on the 50 here mm -hmm. um, and then here with the with the stream and so forth which we yeah here, here it, yeah. yeah but these are still this is uh this is still silt vents this silt is also since they table yes awesome. okay so typically we typically we would just do silt vents in this case we uh, do both Maintenance of hay bales is just a little bit more than, mm -hmm. than yeah. 
because they rot out, they rot out over time. But the objective would be to get in there and get it established, get the wall built, and get you know the planting buffer around the outside mm -hmm. of the wall done. Seed whatever disturbed soil, and yeah. yeah. Obviously, we still need to maintain it until all that is established. Right. The construction sequence is on the plan, but that's not exactly what you're saying. So, oh, um, looks like it. Oh, yeah. flag limits of. Yeah, uh, it's better. <laughs> actually, yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. Which one's have, better? This one's better. Uh, it is. I mean, you have to flag the clearing limit lines, get it inspected before you even start to clear trees. That's oh yeah, good. okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then and, and then you do the. ENS, okay. get an inspection, and then you can start grubbing. Okay. Okay. So it's a bit more control over it. That's good. Okay. Make sure you tell your people that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This pre construction meeting is also necessary. So, yes, these people will know that. Yeah. That's good. So, we'll also put in a, uh, an entrance, an uh, anti tracking pad. That's probably a little wider than required, um, and 50 feet long. and it looks like it's about 24 feet wide. So uh, traffic leaving the site will will get some of the soil off the tires and so forth. Um, but we're you know required if anything gets on the road is to sweep it up and keep it clean. Otherwise, we're going to get complaints and so forth. Um, so stocking topsoil most likely in this area. We had another, uh, we had one over here, but that all went away. Um, and we would, and I going from memory, uh, probably you're not going to get it perfect, but then we would clear and grub after this is installed, mm -hmm. anti tracking pad and the, uh, the silt fence and hay bales. We'll clear, clear it, basically cut the trees down that need to be cut down. Obviously, we don't want to cut any more down than necessary. Um, and then grubbing would be pulling out the stumps um, and removing them from the site, uh, stripping the topsoil uh, in the areas um, of, of the limits of disturbance, and then building the wall would be the first step. And probably concurrently, we'd be working on the uh, foundation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and construct the building. We laid that out, but that's not really. Uh, and are you going to do that plunge pool and rip wrap? That would be one of the first things done too. So place to catch. Typically, you work downstream up, um, but that's up to the contractor a little bit. So we start down in here and get all of this in. Um, get get this section of pipe in. Create all the rip wrap, put the level spreader in. Probably get this one section in here, and then make sure everything is that way. It's kind of it's the site ready uh, for development. What do you think about the timing for this? I was thinking of saying I took the words right out of my mm -hmm. mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the timing is going to want to be not in the wet season. Mm -hmm. So we want on our permit. Our, it looks like we'll be starting after May anyway, given mm. the timing of everything. So yeah, it seems yeah. like it. And site plan approval. So yeah, I don't think we're far off on the drawing set for site plan approval. We need to add a few things, but uh, we figure a couple months for that. Where in February, March, April, by the time we get our bonding, and it's going to be May. Which is the end of the wet season. Maybe right. February. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. I know. I know. None of yeah. us know anything anymore. No. It's just easier to construct when it's dry and so yes, yeah. we don't want to be out there when there's no. you know the monsoon season right. anyway. So um, okay, but we'll have a note on the plan about that. So we can uh, yes. I mean, what, what do we consider on our May 15th? Is that a reasonable? Yeah, yeah, I think we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay. But we'll have a note on the approval of mm -hmm. timing for at least getting the silk fence mm -hmm. and the, but the yada yada, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I think you want to do the drainage and dry, dry conditions. Yeah. We did talk about um, 
what was going to be happening in the parking lot, right? You there weren't going to be any vehicles parked outside, no piles of things um, that would get rained on. Uh, well, we didn't really talk about you know, the limited outdoor since we're so tight on the building now, um, and the there's going to be vehicles parked, say in the parking spaces and so forth. There's a little bit area uh, in this in the rear of the building for outdoor storage, um, but it's not going to be excessive. Like I think when we first came to you guys, we had mm -hmm. a lot more. Um, mm -hmm. So the, and, and you know we had another building over here. We had a lot more opportunity for storage outside. So. We would like some outdoor storage that we're kind of limited now to what we can store out there just because we really shrunk uh, parking spaces to two-way traffic around and that's it. Yeah. Um, that would be challenging for I mean, my clients already be evaluating the use because of where we ended up. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So we, we don't know what's going to happen yet, but we're our, we don't have the room. Mm -hmm. to keep two-way traffic open and mm -hmm. the parking spaces mm -hmm. open and access to the building. So uh, we don't want to say no no outdoor storage. Um, but everything is that's on the pavement. And I'm going to repeat just a little bit. It, it's If something leaks, it gets captured and treated. Um, if there's catastrophic, then there's going to be things in place to deal with that. Um, we're not going to be storing you know, like fuel trucks or something like that out there because that's that requires a spill containment plan that's regulated by the state and the government and the federal the feds and they re re regulate that so but everything is graded to a stormwater system mm -hmm. that then gets treated so there's not going to be if you look at Everything is contained towards the building. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no direct runoff over the wall. Yeah. Um, so I think we've, you know, and again, there's limited areas for outdoor storage. I don't want to say there's no outdoor storage. I, that would really just kind of put a damper on what we've already got. And with the, we're, you know, it's limited, it's limited by what we have, what we're asking for. But the treatment system is not a chemical thing, right? It's just a nope. settling. Uh, it's settling as well as flowables. So it handles um, sediment as well as any oils, soaps, those kinds of things. That's it for me. Anything else, Andy? When you guys want to make a motion to close the public hearing, make a motion to close the um, public hearing for the planner's development. Are you a second? Second. Make a motion to spend the day to close the public hearing on 11's 22 090 Flanders Road. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So moved. All right. Mm. Barbara Williams, have you looked at um, the, uh, the the tape of the meeting that you missed? No. Okay. Oh, for for this. All right. So the next item on the agenda is the consideration of the public hearing. We technically have 35 days from the close to make a decision. Um, but, or we could talk about it tonight and make a decision tonight. What's your pleasure? I would tend to think we should at least have I think preliminary we'll talk about discussion. It tonight. And you're going to be gone. Yeah. Maybe, so. yeah. Pass a draft motion if you want I to. I do. Yeah. A little know. additions. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, pass it on for Eunice. Okay. Apparently, the one on top is for Eunice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get to. 
Yeah, I'll be write it on all of them. Yeah. So you see here, we're adding. So there's an additional, I'll let you read it. Yeah, and then let me just read the yeah. first. Does Greg have a copy? I'm confused about the last one, Samantha. What's that? What about the outdoor storage? I just added those based on your conversation. Yeah, you but is that something we're including? It's saying there will be no outdoor? Or that's we... something for you to discuss. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, yeah, it's allowed. Oh, I see. So, so, I mean, you would need to. Said the last one. Yeah. yeah, you would yeah, need to yeah. find they that. be doing in there outdoor storage somehow impacts this wetland. Yeah. And I don't think you've heard any evidence. No, to that I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> right. And I think it's been pointed out also is that there's not a lot of space for that anyway. So I'm not, I'm not so concerned about that. I think we could add a date for the timing. You know, say May 15th. I, I, I mean, I got to get used to Tabitha's verbiage. Versus still. No, it's it's good. I'm it's not, different. Yeah, it's just yeah, different I'm styles. I'm telling you, yep. I'm old and I got to read carefully now. Before I knew Deb like it was open book. Now I got to read carefully. Well, I will read it. I know it's you ready? The timing of the. I think we can say like. Yeah, but I don't think we can say timing of construction. I think we can just say the timing of the. Uh, Disturbance. Erection of the ENS or what, not the. You know what I'm saying? What am I? Yeah. Okay. I I don't think we can make their whole construction. Oh, no, to be, no, 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 no. That's all. No. But, no, but the, too broad. The but I think beginning. that installation of the erosion control. installation that's the word I was looking for, yeah. not erection. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, S shall be what, what are we going for? I'd rather say so, probably between X and Y, yeah. right? Um, as everybody like June 1st to September 30th, 30th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's generally considered, well, yeah. historically, that's the dry season. That's what I'm like, like, just like, uh, June 1st and um, 15th of September, is that what we said? Is that right, 15th? We were saying 30th, but 15th. Oh, so September 30th, okay. No, I just want to get it right if I'm going to. Any more discussion on this draft motion? No, I think I'm good. good. Well, I'll make a motion to approve Inland Wetland Agency 22-09 Flanders Development for the piping of an intermittent water course construction in the Upland Review area <clears throat> for the following reasons. There are no wetlands lost as a result of this project. There is limited uplands on this building lot and the applicant has proposed a location for the buildings and septic system that will limit wetland impact. The phase sediment and erosion control plan will provide adequate protection to the wetlands during construction. Based on the record, the commission finds that there are no alternatives that would cause less environmental impact. This permit is subject to the four standard conditions in the following modifications. One, any modification to the work in the upland review area or the wetlands imposed by federal, state, or local agency shall require additional review by town staff or the inland wetland agency, whichever is appropriate. Two, a long-term maintenance plan for the plunge pool and stone line channel shall be developed for the property owner or the property owner and approved by planning and development staff prior to filing the site plan and land records. Like that one. 
Three, plan should indicate dimensions in the stone channel, cross-section detail, and identify the surface treatment around the plunge pool between the plunge pool and the level spreader. Four, the, time, um, the, ins uh, the timing for the installation of, erosion, of uh, the erosion control, um, whatever, <laughs> shall take place between June 1st and September 30th. And that's it, four conditions, right? Which has been made, is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, I just wanna make a comment before taking a vote. I think that this is a really great example in my experience of um, a balance between giving someone the ability to develop their property while maintaining as best we can, um, protecting the dwelling. Uh, I think that it's That's a very true. different application than right. what we saw at the very beginning. I so, agree. Yeah. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So moved. I, I abstain. Oh, okay, <laughs> that, that works. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Right. Those again. Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> Thank you. Any public communications? No. Uh, approval of the minutes of January 25th, regular meeting, and January 30th, site walk minutes. Did anybody get a chance to look at those? <laughs> I did. So I'll moved. Oh, okay. Motion to me. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> we had no new applications. Uh, the Oat Barn, or pending applications, the Oat Barn on 35 Campbell Road, that application is not ready. Hang on, these are both Dave's. Yeah, so we'll let him. Oh. Yeah. There we go. Hey, Dave. All right, good evening. Uh, yes, uh, Oat Barn is not ready. Um, we're just getting some clarification. We have gotten revised plans, but um, I've reached out to the applicant to get a little bit more clarification. Awesome. Thank you. And the next pending application is the Durr driveway. Uh, that was the site walk that we took on the 6th. Do you want to talk about that, Dave? Sure. Um, and uh, so I've been in touch with uh, Susan, who attended the site walk um, over the course of this week since, since the um, site walk. And she had asked that uh, they're in the process of retaining services of the soil scientists to better characterize the, the quality of the wetland. So she had asked on behalf of her client that they requ that to, to request to the commission that um, the commission hold off on classifying um, the application at this point until she can come back with the soil scientists mm -hmm. to give that report. We don't know enough about this. We don't know about uh, I the, think I, I the more uh, information we have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so do we need to have any motions about this? Okay. All right, tell her that's that's good, we'll do that. Okay, thank you, we will do. Uh, old business is the uh, notice of violation at 193 Godfrey Road. I expect to have a revised plan um, done by a landscaper for the next meeting. Excellent, yep. <clears throat> report of chair, I have any report. Do you guys have any reports? <laughs> report of staff. No reports. Uh, just uh, two things. Um, so the site walk that we had scheduled for next Monday uh, yeah. has been indefinitely postponed. We'll we'll let you know if there's a new date. So no no. Um, we'll we'll get an email out to you guys. We haven't actually posted it, so we can't cancel it. But we'll just email you folks and just to remind you. Okay. Uh, so don't show up. All right. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. The next meeting. Um, right. Right. We may have quorum issues, so we'll probably be polling all of you just to make sure that, mm. that we have at least three people. Dave won't be here. Eunice won't be here. I'm not sure if Gary I will. I plan to be. What's so, the date of that? Man, um, 22. Yeah, February. I, yeah. I'm, I should be. Okay. Probably. Okay. But Barbara, we're still good. Yeah, but remind me. Yeah. That. We're going to poll. Yeah. Them. Barbara, are you good for the 22nd? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. That's okay. a dicey time for me. Yeah, well, we'll send out an email to everybody just, just
to make sure that we have um, a quorum. Okay. All right. Anybody want to go home? <laughs> this is a long one. <laughs> that guy. I mean, long. All right. So now, so moved. I'm just going to second, and we're just.